right, hello, wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday, and this is a review of one of our annual events. I was trying to think how many years we have done a Penfolds Grange tasting to showcase the new release of Australia's greatest wine. I want to say 1997 was the first wine, or 96 that we previewed, so God, over 10 years now, we have been bringing you, our wine drinking people, the opportunity to drink a bottle of Grange for less than it costs to buy one bottle. Actually, well, not drink a whole bottle yourself, but we did have four vintages of Grange. We had a five-course meal at Cafe Max, prepared by Master Chef Oliver Saucy, which the food was outstanding last night. And uh, like I said, several other wines from Penfolds for less than the price of one bottle of Grange, $295. This is the best value of any wine event that we do all year long. Well, we had a really small group this year, only 14 people, my favorite size group for the back room at Cafe Max. And, um, you know, it was a little light. It's kind of hard to, we paid, managed to pay for all the wine last night, but uh, we got to drink quite a bit, which uh, I'm always willing to sacrifice that little bit of cash monetary gain for more Penfolds Grange. All right, well, uh, <clears throat> we had a nice lineup last night. Like I said, the food was absolutely fantastic. We started out with the bin 51 Riesling from Penfolds. This is from the Adelaide Hills, and this wine is a classic drier style of Riesling, a bit of petrol to the white peach and green apple fruit, a little zesty uh, lime citrus, and some pretty white floral notes. Went excellent with these mini phyllo shrimp purses that Oliver did, and also with the Wahoo Tartar, really fresh, helped clean up the palate uh, with a little bit of uh, that spicy mayo and caviar. Worked really lovely with that. Maybe a little bit light on its own, uh, but I love Riesling, one of my favorite grape varietals in the white category. One of the longest lived grape Grape varietals. This wine comes in a screw cap also. Very nice. A lot of these Australians coming in screw caps today, especially the whites. Uh, the Yatana Chardonnay next. This is, uh, well, the first vintage of this wine was 1995. It started out as being a big butterball, full of malolactic, and they've uh, be this, turned this into more of a Burgundian style Chardonnay. And Yatana means little by little, and little by little they have really created one of the best white wines coming from Australia. And uh, a lot of it comes from Tasmania today. I don't know about this 2006, which was from Tumbarumba. And, uh, well, a little bit from Adelaide also. Cooler areas, but Tasmania produces some great white wines. And the Chardonnay uh, had a very Burgundian bouquet, kind of hint of vanilla and cinnamon spice, some ripe tropical fruit, peach, Asian pear, and guava. And a nice complexity on the nose, some light floral notes as well there. Smooth and creamy on the tongue, but with that laser-like focused acidity. A little bit of evolution, evolution here, but... Very fresh, some lightly toasted oak spice. This wine's got a long way to go. Most excellent juice. Still very young, the 2006 Yatana. All right, and then the McGill Estate, one of my favorite wines from Penfolds, one of the only single vineyard wines they do. This is the estate that Dr. Penfolds uh, first uh, planted in the 1860s. And uh, this is a fantastic wine. The 1997 vintage drinking at its peak right now. A little lighter vintage. Hint of that green tea and eucalyptus to the black cherry and black plum fruit. Notes of smoke and dried meats. A bit of an animal note there. Some lead pencil showing as well. Smooth and silky on the tongue though. It still has some nice black cherry and that minty note showing through on the finish. Along with some cedar and graphite notes. Still nice on the second day. Maybe even the most improved here. I always uh, keep a little bit uh, for the second day here at the store. I open them up. You clean the wine up, get them off their sediment. Very important with Syrah. Syrah throws a lot of sediment. Even the Young uh, Grange 2007 had a little bit of sediment in it. This 1997, excellent with the rabbit confit, a uh, po house-made popper dell that Ali did. Outstanding. Not to mention, I forgot to mention the hog snapper with that uh, uh, <clears throat> Penfold Jatarna Chardonnay. It was fantastic with sunflower choke and seeds. Uh, incredible combination with the Chardonnay. All right, next up, Fog Gras and Shiraz. One of my favorite things. I had this at a Penfolds dinner, I don't know, five years ago when Peter Gago was in town. They did something down at South Beach in some restaurant. Uh, absolutely fantastic. The richness of the Syrah and that sweet plummy fruit goes wonderfully with the Fog Gras. The RWT 2007, a poster child for a rich, jammy Shiraz. You know, these wines all still have balance, though. Penfolds, not, you're not going to find 16% alcohol Shiraz like like these Mali Duka Huka Wuka wines. These are 14 and a half, 
sometimes maybe upwards of 15%, but still have lovely freshness. The Penfolds RWT also uh, was introduced in 1997, was the first vintage, probably introduced in 99 or 2000. This one was created by the great John Duvall, the winemaker before Peter Gago. The best Shiraz, mostly from Bar Barossa Valley Fruits, sees 100% new French oak. Uh, Grange is all American oak. That's the difference between these two. And Grange has got a little Cabernet in it usually also. This wine had a lovely dark cherry liqueur-like fruit with brown sugar, dark spices on the nose, a hint of mint and butter, uh, bittersweet chocolate. Really lovely richness here. Big and chewy on the palate with layers of that dark spice and minty chocolate notes showing through on the fi finish. Very well balanced, uh, very well built and round, uh, but still a firm underbelly of acidity. Really well built. This wine will last another 20 years. Most excellent juice this 2007 RWT. 2007 was a drought year, so you really notice the concentration in the wines. 2005 Cellar Reserve was up next. And what are you going to show with lamb? With uh, lamb, of course, Austrian Shiraz or Cabernet, both really good. And uh, the grilled roasted rack of lamb with the garlic mink uh, crust was just fantastic with this wine. The Cellar Reserve's only been made twice, 1993 and 2005. So, um, I don't know, sometimes Penfolds, they just make these wines uh, like on a whim, I guess, when they feel like the conditions are right or whatever. But this wine had a lot, of, a lot of sweet tobacco and dill oak character, uh, some fresh herbs and earth there. Pretty nuanced with to the red currant and plumberry fruit. A smooth wine on the palate, 2005, a rather forward vintage, drinking really nice. A good hand of spice and freshness on the finish, though. Wonderful balance with that excellent juice and wonderful with the lamb. And then the Grange, the big boys, the 78, the old dog we had on hand, and the 84, then the 95, and then the 2007. 78 was the wine of the night. This wine really opened up nicely. It's got 10% Cabernet Sauvignon in the blend. Still quite youthful in the glass, though. Dark cherry color, good amount of that black cherry and dark plum fruit on the nose with hints of eucalyptus, tobacco, spice, a fudge-like chocolate note, really complex bouquet, continuing to open up all night, smooth and velvety on the tongue, the tannins fully resolved, but a host of spice and wonderful freshness, that dark cherry and plum fruit lasting through the finish. This wine could go another 10 plus years. Excellent balance. Wine of the night, most excellent juice. Uh, maybe just a shade behind the 76 in the greatest old Penfolds Granges that I've ever tasted. The 84 Penfolds Grange showing a good bit of earth on the nose, some dark cocoa spice and dried meat-like nuance there as well to the dark berry fruit. fruit. Nice complexity and evolution here on the bouquet. A little bit more evolved even than the, the 78 it seemed in terms of the amount of fruit left in it, but a very smooth and balanced on the palate. Uh, nice freshness and uh, that earth and spice echoing through the finish, drinking really nicely right now. An excellent bottle of Grange. The 95 was kind of the underling on the table. Still had a nice amount of fruit on the nose, blackberry, black cherry fruits, a uh, host of black spice, licorice, that eucalyptus showing in this wine as well. Nice freshness and a good bit of that blackberry and black licorice fruit showing through the finish, a bit of sweet chocolate there, but maybe just a shade behind the 1984. The 2007, an excellent Grange, most excellent Grange. This, like I said before, a drought beer, so you really notice the concentration in these wines. Thick aromas of blackberry, black raspberry, jam-like fruit, really concentrated and rich on the nose. Some black licorice, brown sugar, really well endowed bouquet of aromas there. Big and chewy on the palate with layers of dark jammy fruits, almost liqueur-like in concentration with spice, licorice, soy, bittersweet chocolate, really decadent and rich. And uh, we always serve Grange with a cheese course, so, you know, it kind of stands alone by itself, but a little bit of that eucalyptus also showing on the finish. Most excellent juice. This wine could go 20 or 30 years, as we've seen in the 78. Grange will last that long in your cellar. That is why it is considered one of the world's great wine. Wine's worth $497 a bottle. Uh, well, <laughs> if you can afford to drink Grange, you should experience it at least once in your life. You should not leave this earth without trying it. The Grandfather Port, one of my favorite wines from Penfolds. They do a lot of sweet wine in Australia. Well, their first customers were the Brits, so in order to get that wine all the way back to Britain, they needed to fortify it, a trick they learned from Portu uh, Port in Portugal. Uh, although there's uh, some wines in this blend that are over 50 years old, the average age of this tawny is close to 20 years. They do a Solera system with this wine, so they put the young wines on top. They drain the old juice off the bottom and bottle it and uh, this wine's got a lovely caramel color to it just a hint of burgundy in it and a nice nutty aroma kind of dates and figs sun-dried fruit and uh, on the palate still even though it's got a lot of sweetness this wine finishes somewhat dry it's got some nice spice to it and uh, really delicious with the uh, dessert that Oliver did this mousse caramel and nut mix cake oh, it was fantastic with a caramel sauce Ali wonderful job 
Thanks to everybody who came last night and made this once-in-a-lifetime evening special. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.